Welcome back to Flex Your Head, another special episode of Scream Therapy. On Flex Your Head, we take a breather from punk rock and mental health and explore classic punk albums, which I guess is good for mental health. Today we're joined by Donald Kennedy, his first appearance on Flex Your Head. How's it going today, Donald? It's good, Jason. It's good. Glad to connect with you. What album are we talking about today? Uh, We're talking about White Lungs, sorry. So, Sorry is White Lung's second album. It was released in May 2012 on Deranged Records, and the band White Lung was formed in 2006 in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is also close to where we live. The band is Mish Wei on vocals, Kenneth Williams on guitars, and Marie Vesselu on drums, and they had a revolving door of bass players through the band, but on this particular album, it's Grady McIntosh on bass. First of all, I just want to say, Donald, before we get into this, this is by far the newest album that we've done on Flex Your Head. To call an album classic usually takes at least 20 years, but in this case, <laughs> uh, here we go. What's your opening thoughts on Sorry? So after you know, sort of reading and listening to a bunch of reviews, I know a lot of bands tend to hate their first album or their early work. I think it's really funny how much Mish just completely disowns basically anything that happened before Sorry, to the point of calling the band a joke before Kenneth came along, you know, saying Kenneth forced them to make a real record. But the real record wasn't It's the Evil, their first album with him. It was Sorry. And I always consider those albums somewhat similar in sound. Yeah. Although going back now over this past week, you can hear them making some steps in between It's Evil and Sorry, where Kenneth's guitar sound takes on more of that anxious vibe that Mish always talks about. She says that um, before Sorry, she was just kind of like screeching. <laughs> that was her <laughs> vocal style. And yeah. Jesse, who produced both albums, kind of brags about his vocal coaching being a reason why bands come back to him. And you can hear maybe in between the two albums that Mish takes a step forward. And and also lyrically, she's a lot more vulnerable and personal. We'll get into the lyrics. I just want to say flat out, this album is 45 RPM and it's 19 minutes. So I don't know if we can consider that an album proper, but uh, what a blast. I listened to it and it's over before I even realize it. And then it's back to it again. That kind of plays into the name of the album too, right? Because they called it Sorry because they got into the studio and were like, Sorry, it's only 10 songs. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 10 songs in 19 minutes. That's like under two minutes per song. I think it was you that got me into this band. If it is, I want to thank you for that. Well, I was really into kind of that emergency room scene at the time. I guess that was like four years before this album came out. But even that like initial single they recorded in uh, Ryan Dick's Garage, which is definitely not particularly good in comparison to this album. <laughs> you know, I was into that and I just, you know, I had a friend to use practice space in the emergency room, just thought that whole scene was so cool. And it was such a neat energy at the time in Vancouver. The band put out four albums. It's the Evil in 2010, Sorry in 2012, Deep Fantasy 2014, and Paradise in 2016. Not sure if they're still a functional band. The last time I saw some stuff on them online was about 2018. I wasn't sure either, but went back and listened to a bunch of interviews between 2018 and now. The last interview I could find with Mish was uh, for the Women in Rock Oral History Project. That was just last year. They started recording with Jesse. They went back to Jesse Gander in like 2018, 2019, and were recording with him. Had planned to put an album out in 2019. Obviously, that didn't happen. But then again, we're saying in 2021, we've got an album coming out this year. So... Okay. Presumably, we're going to see something eventually, but you know, they've been working on it now for four years. We talked about doing White Lung on Flex Your Head, and we did a little bit of back and forth on it. We picked Sorry in the end, and after listening to the whole discography over the last couple of weeks here, it is the right pick, even though it's only 19 minutes long. (laughs) (laughs) Why did you pick it? Like you, I think it's my favorite album. Once they kicked Grady out of the band and Deep Fantasy came out. I don't know if even though it's the same producer and the same core members, 
it just feels like a different album, a little bit less immediate. And maybe that comes from the way they recorded it, you know, both with It's the Evil and Sorry, really fast from like writing to recording to getting the album out. You know, It's the Evil, that whole process was like a month. Sorry, they were finishing songs the day before recording them and they were all kind of in the same room. And there's probably some tension in the band that also carried forward to what you heard on the album, which made it interesting. The Deep Fantasy, yeah. Kenneth is in Montreal, Anne Marie's in Vancouver, Mish is in LA. They're all in different geographic spaces and just, you know, recording and putting it together differently. That kind of feeling of a raw nerve exposed is not as apparent on the album. And also starting with Deep Fantasy, I guess Mish's writing changes where she's more writing from the point of view of other people and less from herself. So yeah, just a more vulnerable, raw album. So I don't know where to start with Kenneth slash Kenny's guitar playing. Even watching him play is amazing. I interviewed Mish one time and she was talking about how she sees him as kind of like a pro skateboarder doing all these wild tricks that no one knows how he's doing them. You know, the kick flips and the hard flips and the whatever. That comparison really stuck with me because it makes sense. What style would this be? Like a speed metal shoegaze? <laughs> I mean, he described the band as playing pop songs at the speed of hardcore. And then, you know, Mish picked up on that description and has just used it ever since. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, I guess if you're going with his own description of his style, that's what it is. On this album, it's just all cylinders firing. Most of the songs come out of the gates. Bunny, Glue, these songs that just... I hate to say it, but I've always felt like he drives the band, him and Mish... Without him playing guitar in the band, they would still be good, but not nearly as good as they are. Well, I think they've said the same thing, yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. It's a completely different band. Okay, so let's talk about some of the songs on the album. I keep saying album. I, d I can't really call it an album <laughs> in my head because of how short it is, but it's an album. The three that stick out for me are Thick Lip, Bunny, and Glue. But the whole album is just a... It's like helicopter blades. It's just so fast and, <laughs> and spinning all over the place. But those are my three ones that really stand out. I love her singing style. Well, on those songs, but the whole album, it kind of feels like she doesn't really give a fuck about singing, but then she can kind of sing, but then she sings her way through not knowing how to sing. It's just like this weird, like, <laughs> I don't know what that even means, but that's how I had felt about it. What about you for, for standouts? The Bad Way is definitely my favorite song. I can't necessarily relate to, uh, I don't know, the feeling of watching somebody descend into a K-hole or into a, a heroin coma or what I assume the song is about. But I've definitely had, you know, those sort of alcoholic or addicted friends where, you know, you reach a point in the night where you can tell that they're the person who uh, isn't doing drugs to party and have fun. They're trying to kill some sort of pain inside them and you're looking into their eyes and they're like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. I definitely relate to that part of the song and her, her energy on that is amazing. Most of the album has kind of the same tempo. So it sounds in some ways like one long 19 minute song with all these sort of hardcore stops between them. You know, there's variation, of course, but it's got this really drive ahead, same tempo, same style. It almost feels like, like a painting or something. It just kind of continues. There's no real, other than maybe glue, there's no song that really stands apart from the rest. I know what you mean. It's like you, you strap yourself in and get pummeled for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last song is Deadbeat is under a minute long, which isn't the way that you expect the album to end. Usually a 57 second song goes third or fifth or yeah, right. break up the album. Yeah. Every song here is great. Again, like I said before, there's two or four that really stick out for me. The drumming is very, it kind of really carries it, but it doesn't really go off track too much. I don't consider Anne-Marie to be you know, a very technical drummer. She's just kind of got that. You ever see that little monkey that's got the cymbals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, smashing them back and forth. That's kind of like how I picture her drumming. <laughs> and I'm not trying to like be mean. I just think it's really cool that she can keep that same pulse through the whole album.
it's not a distraction, which a, a drummer can be. I think Gander has alluded to that too. As one of his least favorite things is working with drummers. <laughs> I, I imagine she would be a little easier to work with because she goes in, she does her job. She keeps the beat, keeps the band on track. And I love the bass playing on this album too. I'm not sure. I know there was some, you know, obviously some tension with the bass player and she left shortly after this album, I believe. Right after the Sorry Tour, I think the comment uh, from Kenny was, some people aren't meant to live in a van for a year. <laughs> but she took legal action after they kicked her out, which, which oh, wow. apparently, apparently cost the band uh, a bunch of money. Huh? I didn't realize she, she was litigious. Yeah, Mish goes into it a bit in her uh, interview for uh, the Women in Rock World History Project. The lyrics in this record, I'm the kind of person that hears the lyrics, makes my own interpretation of them. The words warp and morph as I listen to them. Uh, when I go and sit down and read the lyric sheet, I'm completely flabbergasted and have no idea <laughs> that, that song's about that. Yeah. One of the ones was uh, the song Glue, where she talks about the idea of a horse being put down and turned into glue. Yeah. And I always just pictured that song as being like literally about that. Like it's about a <laughs> song about a horse being put down. When Take the mirror, obviously, the imagery there is, is a cocaine mm-hmm. reference, uh, passing the mirror. But again, like when I read the lyrics, I was totally blown away. And I've got three or four that I'll uh, throw out there. But first, what are your thoughts on the lyrics? White Lung has always been a band that initially when I was listening to, um, I mean, maybe a little bit like you, the lyrics didn't hit or just I couldn't make them out within the cacophony of noise. You know, there'd be uh, like a single line uh, that would stand out in a chorus. I can't stay when you're the bad way or something like that. And then the rest of it would kind of get lost. And so for me, it was always about maybe that one line that you could shout out while you were at a show and the rest (laughs) just got lost in the rest of the energy. Yeah. The ones that stuck out to me. And again, I barely had an idea that these are what the lyrics were, but I'll just read them quickly here. So take the mirror. Part of the lyrics are, I'm tied to the seat, stuck with your feet. Coiled tight, dead around my neck. Fat face is right. Sleep through the night. We'll breathe when we're rotten dead. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Who knew? (laughs) Well, and she's so into uh, like serial killers and and, and true crime. Was that the one about the Long Island Killer? No, there was another song about the Long Island Killer. Those Girls is about the Long Island Killer. Yeah, The most feminist song on the album, she says. These are from Thick Lip. At the back of your mind, there's a pretty young girl. I know that you're better than most of this world, but your thick, dumb lips tell a real dumb truth. That one's, that one's great. Mish is a writer. She does a lot of writing for different magazines, and this is what she does. But wow, you can only do so much with rhyming couplets or whatever that you see in most songs. Yeah, she does a lot with a little, maybe a little bit like Iggy Pop in that sense, where, you know, those Stooges songs, in terms of actual number of words, yeah. but they express a lot with a little. Totally. This is from Glue which, you know, I still think is about a horse being put down (laughs) because they're sick. But maybe this will shed a little bit of light on it. One day you'll see that her fat head will eat me. You're a dead horse riding, but I'm out for you. Fill my pistol pocket, melt her down to glue. Again, wow, I just love, those lyrics are amazing. Yeah. She said that most of the songs, or a lot of them anyway, are about Gus from St. Dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wonder just how many are... I'm not exactly sure how to explain the way that these songs just pummel and, and come on so fast. Again, I really think it's, you know, Kenny's obviously driving the songs, at least initially when they start. Have you ever seen them play live? Uh, some people, you know, when they get asked, you know, what was the best day of your life? You know, <laughs> you know they'll say like when their kids were born or, you know, when they got married. I mean, I'm going to say the best day of my life was December 6, 2014, when White Lung played Lucky Bar, because I came out of that show just feeling, I don't know, more confident, you know, in control than I'd ever felt in my life. Just something about being in the presence of that band and listening to those songs just had me on such a high. Would that have been the sorry? That, that would have been the Deep Fantasy Tour. Probably, okay. Yeah. Because I noticed I was looking at some shows that they had played and they had played 
Sugar at one point with Fucked Up, and I wasn't sure if maybe that was the album after in Victoria. Yeah, I don't know that I went to that show. I think I've seen them at Logan's. Saw them once at a great house show, somebody's living room. So I know what this is like because I also saw them play more recently. I saw them in Vancouver at the, at the um, what's that place called? I saw them in Vancouver. Again, I know how this looks and feels, but the guitar playing live, like watching him play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just frantic and all over the place. And Mish describes him as just sound, like the guitar playing is sounding like anxious and sick. It's a good description. One of the easy ways to compare really good guitar players to say they sound like classical music that, oh, they're the Beethoven of Mm -hmm. punk rock or whatever. And I think in this case, it actually makes some sense because there's definitely a lot of composing going on here. I I mean, I would imagine that he's spending a lot of time coming up with this stuff. He's not just coming into the studio and saying, let's play and here's the thing. Like, I really think he's... Well, that's the amazing thing about him, right? Is that I think maybe on those first couple albums that was what he was doing but then he gets to deep fantasy and like he he sort of said you know once they didn't have a full-time bass player anymore he had to stop being all over the place and actually like sit down and and, uh, write real music (laughs) (laughs) it was like what what were you doing before because you know that was great too I don't want to inflame the lawsuit, but what do you think that chances are that he played bass on Sorry? Uh, I, I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Just because the reason I ask is because the bass playing on Sorry is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah. One of the weird things about this album, I use Tidal, which is, a, I'm not going to plug them, but anyways, I listen to music streaming online and on my phone. And one of the services I use does not have Sorry in their list. All the other albums and singles are on there, which I thought was kind of strange. Like all the uh, pre It's the Evil yeah, singles, all the there seven too? inches, and except Sorry's not on there. So I've been listening to it on YouTube for the whole last couple of weeks, which is annoying. Maybe that's because uh, they don't want to give Grady the five pennies for that. I was reading up on uh, some of their reviews, and I don't know if you saw this one, but Rolling Stone named the album one of the top ten albums of 2012. Out I didn't of see all that. The albums no. that came out in 2012. They said, quote, Vancouver kids bang through 10 bursts of female punk fury. Ugh, female punk fury. Don't like that part. Yeah. In 19 minutes with Mish Way's hungry yowl leading the charge. Nothing fancy here. You get thrashed. You get bashed. You notice strange breezes all over your shins. Then as soon as it's over, you press play again. <laughs> the, the press play again, for sure. I mean, I used to ride my bike around Victoria with this on repeat for hours. I walked from... Comox to the Pal River Ferry, which is about a two and a half hour walk. <laughs> and I listened yeah. to, we listened to White Lung's whole discography. Uh, such a great band. Another review from Krista Cherry of All Music. She says, Sorry isn't so much the follow up to White Lung's 2010 full length debut, It's the Evil, as it is a continuation. Like the getaway car driver outside of a bank robbery, the Vancouver based neo punkers immediately kick into high gear and go screeching into the night. I totally feel that sorry being a continuation of it's the evil. Yeah. It it feels like a total, you know, natural progression from that album. They really flow into each other. It is interesting for me how much more I like sorry. It's the evil is great. If I put it on and never heard white lung before I'd be stoked, even though sorry is a continuation. It just overall, it's just sounds so much better to me. I don't know if it's just more attachment to it or I don't know how long it's the evil is. I think it might be a little bit longer. All right. Do you want to do some YouTube comments? Sure. Let's do that. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've been privy to this little feature on Flex Your Head, but it's uh, it can get really nasty. It can get really dumb, but let's go with this. Couldn't really find a lot because there's actually not a lot of YouTube comments on their stuff. So CG Parrot says, four years ago, every song is the same speed and same drum beat. Kind of boring. Then Clover says, four years ago, honestly, 
Though what I like to point out about it is that when I finally pay attention to the guitar and bass, it's pretty cool. Although the drums could be way better. <laughs> CJ Parrot <laughs> chimes back four years ago. I've given it a few more listens now, and it really isn't that bad. Catchy and at least the same speed as a good speed. <laughs> um, have you seen the, the White Long live footage that's on YouTube? It's from Brooklyn from 2012. No, I haven't. Oh, it's great. So it's uh, titled White Long, April 20th, 2012, Brooklyn, New York, full set. And Mish starts out the set before they play saying, feel free to go crazy, but just don't throw a cinder block at my head. I don't want brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in this really weird basement-y warehouse space in Brooklyn. <laughs> looks like there might be maybe 50 people there. Yeah. And it's great. You should go watch that. You hear about the show they did in Manchester? There was like one guy there. They played like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and screwed around with one other track and then just left the stage. <laughs> Perfect. So Yard Sa- Yard Sater, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yard Sater says eight years ago, Jesus, look at him during Thick Lip. They sent him from the future. And then Yard Sater says eight years ago, <laughs> Kenny is inhuman. Watch his hands during glue. He's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. your final thoughts about this album just a near perfect they don't call it punk but i'll call it punk record that'll stay with me forever it's a raw exposed nerve of a record capturing a band at a specific time and place in their progression and yeah just fantastic lots of pro skateboarding tricks from the guitarist (laughs) lots of howls and yells from the singer and i love that It's, it's very original like all these comparisons to I mean, she's even said it herself, Courtney Love and Bikini yeah. Kill. And I don't really hear that. In my mind, it doesn't sound like anybody else. And, and to go with that music, I couldn't picture anybody else singing in that band. Perfect interplay between the vocals, the guitar. Again, I think the bass playing on the album is really solid. I like listening to albums where you just listen to the bass or you just listen to the drums, kind of picking it out. The drums, you know, there's that monkey with the cymbals, you know, just crash, 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 crash. And uh, I wouldn't say that's the best part of the band, but it definitely sets things on the right path. What a band, what a band. If you can listen to this for hours upon hours when you're walking (laughs) somewhere, riding your bike, that's all we can really ask, I guess. Yeah, I left listened to it hundreds of times and not tired of it yet, which is saying something. Wow, we burned through that pretty fast, just like the album. I don't know if we did a bit more than 19 minutes, but <laughs> we could have almost done it, like played the album and just done it in real time. Check out Scream Therapy, the podcast, which is about punk rock and mental health, which is the main podcast, as well as other episodes of this Flex Your Head podcast. We've talked about Unwound and we've talked about No Means No and Propagandi and a lot of other really amazing bands. We did Bikini Kill a couple episodes ago. That was awesome as well. So yeah, Scream Therapy, HQ.com. That's where you can find all the podcast episodes of the main podcast and this one. Thanks, Donald. It was great talking about White Lung's story with a fellow infatuated White Lung fan. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, Jason, for having me on. That was great.